I, you know, really need a formal introduction to this man of God. He is a, a, a young man who started early. Amen. Amen. And he's still young. Amen. Uh, but Pastor Brown is a humble, humble gentleman. Amen. He's a humble gentleman even uh, amongst the preachers and amongst the pastors. Amen. That make a lot of noise until he got a mic in his hand. All right. Amen. But when he has a mic in his hand, you will know that he is a preacher. Amen. You will know that he's somebody preacher. Amen. We, we, we know uh, his homiletical accolades as a preacher Amen. in Baltimore. But I think the most important thing that we could say about Pastor Brent Brown, and if those of you who don't know, he is musically inclined as well. Amen. Amen. Uh, for those who have had to go through seasons of grieving, he has been used in many ways to help people through the process. Amen. But the most important thing that I could say about Pastor Brent Brown is that he is a blood-washed believer. Yes, sir. And he loves God. Amen. And that he is serious about ministry. Introduced to some, present to others, none other than the pastor of Greater Harvest Baptist Church in the person of Pastor Brent Brown. Here he is. After we hear his choir, the next voice that you will hear will be that of Pastor Brown. Amen. Come on, give God some praise for our pastor and our preacher for tonight.
grace. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank you, Lord. Before I begin to pray, can you just do me one favor? Begin to open your mouth and pray for your neighbor. Yes. Bless Lord. Bless Lord, my neighbor. My name might be Father. Touch right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Forgive this brother who hand out. Pray, Lord, whatever the need might be, that you would supply it, Father. Touch him, Lord. Count of his head to the soul of his feet, Father. Lord, whatever he stands in need of, Father. Consecrate us now to thy service, Lord, by the power of grace divine. That our soul look up yes. with a steadfast hope. Yes. And our will yes. be lost in thine. Draw me nearer. Yes. Nearer, blessed Lord, yes. to the cross. Yes. Thou hast died. Draw me yes. nearer. Yes. Nearer, blessed Lord, yes. to thy precious yes. bleeding side. Is it the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ that we pray? And collectively together we shout amen, 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 amen. and amen. amen. Grab your amen. Bibles on tonight as we prepare ourselves to go to the throne of grace. Whatever the custom of this house is in reference to sitting or standing to the word of the Lord, we're going with the custom of the house. Amen. Grab your Bibles, meet me at Luke chapter 18. When you get there, scroll on down to verse 35. Luke chapter 18, verse 35 is where we shall begin tonight. While you're turning there, we give honor and homage to your fearless leader, yeah. the pastor Amen. of this great church, Pastor Merrill Griffin. Amen. We cannot thank God for him without thanking God for his wonderful bride who is in here on tonight, Lady Griffin, and their wonderful Amen. daughter who's in the worship on this evening. Amen. To all of the leadership and the discipleship of this Soul Harvest Church and Ministries. Amen. Amen. To all of you who have come from Greater Harvest, thank you so much for sharing with us to Amen. this singing aggregation. Your pastor loves you so dearly. Amen. Lady Brown is here tonight and Miss Essence. Amen. Luke chapter 18, verse 35. Are you there? Yeah. <laughs> and it came to pass that as he was come now unto Jericho, a certain blind man sat by the wayside begging. And hearing the multitude pass by, he asked him what it meant. And they told him that Jesus of Nazareth passeth by. And he cried, saying, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Hmm. I want to talk tonight from this demonic thought in mind. I'm crippled, but I'm not crazy. Yeah. You want to help me preach this message tonight? Look at somebody and testify. Tell them I'm crippled, but I sure ain't crazy. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Thank you, God, for being our strength and our redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm crippled, but I ain't crazy. Yeah, come on, Pastor. Preacher. I would suggest on this rainy Friday evening, we are indeed living in a time where doctors, physicians, psychologists, and psychotherapists all seem to get a kick, I would say, for lack of words, out of offering diagnosis unto people these days. Well... And it seems as if, like never before, psychotherapists, psychologists, counselors, all of the alike, enjoy diagnosing people so many mental illnesses. It yeah. appears as if everybody in 2018 has some sense of disability. Well, it appears as if. The doctors enjoy labeling everybody as having ADHD. 
Well, ADD, uh-huh. and some sense of attention deficit disorder. Well, I've never seen it in my life, Deacon Gardner, where everybody got something. Yeah. It appears as if they enjoy Brother Gary diagnosing everybody. Yeah. They labeled all of our children as being hyper. Come on, Pat. They're labeling all the saints as having some type of mental disorder, some some type of educational a setback, if you will. Come on, Pastor. But I've come to remind somebody under the sound of my voice on tonight that as much as people attempt to deem you as having some type of disorder, yeah. some type of disability, as much as psychiatrists and and, and, and psychotherapists and counselors like to, or seems like they're enjoying diagnosing you. Yeah. As much as they enjoy it, can I remind you on this wonderful Friday evening? Yeah. They may attempt to have the diagnosis. Come on, Pastor. But they do not have the final prognosis. Come on now. Yes, sir. Come on now. They may attempt to deem you as being something, may label you as having something, but can I remind you on this rainy Friday evening that the final say belongs to Jehovah. That's right. That's right. And as crazy as they may try to label you as, as set back as they may attempt to label you as, as delayed as they may attempt to label you as. Can I remind you that the final say uh, belongs to the one who created each and every last one of us. Come on, come on. And I, that's what I want to remind you on this Friday night, that this is the realization of this gentleman that is sitting here by the wayside. Yeah, yeah. That Jesus meets as he begins to enter into Jericho. Yeah. yeah. Tiptoe through this text with me. I'll give you what I'm trying to relay unto you. Jesus is on the move as he has been for some time now operating in his ministry. Right. He has been healing the sick. Yeah, yeah. He's been raising the dead. He's been going around teaching and preaching and yeah. informing all of those who would listen unto his tranquil voice about the kingdom of God. And one of the stops that he makes is along the road in Jericho. He is making his way up the road in Jericho. And according to Luke the physician, there's a blind man that's seated by the roadside. Well, uh -huh. This blind gentleman who is seated by the roadside hears all the ruckus that's going on. And when he hears all the commotion, he raises query, what in the world is happening around here? They simply reply unto him, Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. They inform him that Jesus is passing by. And when he gets informed that Jesus is passing by, look at what the text says. He begins to cry out with a loud voice, Jesus thou, son of David, yeah. have mercy upon me. Now if you don't mind me stopping right there, rewinding and giving you what we've just gone through so far, a blind man. Yes, a blind beggar, according to many of the gospel writings, is sitting by the roadside. And as this blind beggar is sitting by the roadside, yes, he begins to listen to what's going on. Now, mind you, this gentleman, my brothers and sisters, happens to be visually impaired. His, his sight is restricted. His eyes do not allow him the ability to physically watch what's happening around him. Yes, he cannot see. But while he cannot see, he pushes past what he cannot do because 
Jesus, he hears that stuff is going on. He said, hey, y'all, what's that? They say, it's Jesus of Nazareth passing by. He presses past and he yells out, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Look at what Luke testifies. If you left your Bibles open and you meet me at verse 40, the text says, and Jesus stood and commanded him to be brought unto him. And when he was come near, he asked him, saying, what wilt thou, what wilt thou that I should do unto thee? Hold up, let me back up, went too far. Uh, look, 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 because I want to give you this one more. Look, look at verse 39. And they which went, through verse 39, and they which went before rebuked him. Uh, yeah. Verse 38 says, and he cried, saying, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy. Verse 39, and they which went before rebuked him. He starts crying, and they start trying to shut him up. He realizes that Jesus is coming. He starts yelling, and they try to shut him down. They say, shush, man. Jesus, thou son of David, shush up. They try to shut, can I submit unto you that whenever you recognize that your limitations should never stop you from going forward in God, be prepared for people who will try to hinder your hey. Come on now. <laughs> whenever you realize that what you're dealing with is not enough to stop you from
Well. <laughs>